who in the district attorney's office may have been violating law, the court recognized that these were important documents and that they had to turn them over. They gave 20 days. Does it seem fair, in your opinion, for the DA's office to have to do this for 2017 records? Well, of course, they've known for two months that we wanted this, but um, I don't have a problem with the 20-day timeline. There's no urgency to this, so it's more important that they do it right. So um, if, if they take 20 days to turn them over, we expect to get full production for 2017. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's important to, to remember that we're not asking for the subpoenas themselves. All we're asking for is the identities of the attorneys who issued them. And at no point did the district attorney indicate that they can search electronic records. And, and the judge recognized that. that you know, there, there must be emails, or there may be emails, we don't know. There may be documents on a document server. Uh, that doesn't take any time at all to punch in a few keywords and, and issue an electronic search. Um, they didn't indicate that they tried to do that. Uh, we don't know whether those documents exist in electronic form, but if they do, it would be very quick and simple for them to produce them. Your reaction that they said that this is going to take tens of thousands of files and the fact that they don't have that manpower, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, again, we don't know whether that's true because they haven't indicated that they tried to do electronic searches. Um, it was very clear that a lot of those files don't really fit within the criteria because, yeah, files that were never really open, files that were just closed immediately, they're not going to have this information in them. So the, the court recognized that that wasn't really an accurate assessment of what's involved in complying with our request. Do you think the DA's office is just trying to essentially sweep this whole matter of fake subpoenas under the rug? <laughs> well, I'm not going to, you know, I'm never going to speculate on somebody else's motives. Um, I do think that there are things they could have done to attempt to comply that they did not do, like do electronic searches, um, or indicate that they had tried to do that. Um, so our, our um, impression of the initial denial was that they did, made no effort at all to try to comply, they just simply denied it. Um, why they did that, what their motives are, I, I can't address that. Any plans on going back with the search since they said you'll have to narrow down the search and no, I think the court the court took care of that. The court recognized that we, you know we never intended to get 20 years worth of records. We had no way of knowing that they have attorneys on their staff who have been there 20 years. Um, uh, you know we we would not have had that information. So we don't need 20 years of records. The court recognizes five years. Five years is, is plenty. Um, so the court narrowed it down in a way that we would have done easily um, because we don't want 20 years anyway. Five years is sufficient. Um, one year at a time makes perfect sense. Uh, I'm perfectly satisfied with what the court You filed the civil lawsuit. You're here in court. You just had a victory in court. How big and broad do you think this issue of fake subpoenas is? Well, we know it's big and we know it's broad. The point is to find out how big and how broad. Um, and, and, and the public has a right to know that. That's exactly what we're trying to find out. But certainly, if there are district attorneys who are violating the law and violating the rights of the, of the public in New Orleans, that's a very important issue and the public has a right to know. Marjorie, if you get the names of the attorneys that use the fake subpoenas, what would you see as the next step? Oh, we'll take that one step at a time.